a massive thank you to Debanshu, Paul, Ash, Gibbo, Anton and Keith and subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here finally back with more of our F1 2021 my team career mode. Yes, the last week has been very, very odd uh, with the channel. Obviously, we got all the news of Portimao coming to the game. Uh, we've obviously been jumping into a couple of other different things as well. Obviously, the WR League race that I did yesterday as well. If you guys missed that video, make sure you go back and check it out. So, yeah, it's been five days since the last my team race. Obviously, when this video uh, does go live there. Again, haven't been feeling too well, but I'm pretty much back to normal now and ready to dive in with more F1 2021 content as well for you guys. Of course, we also hit 50, uh, sorry, 15,000. That was a little while ago now. 19,000 subscribers on the channel. So, obviously, a massive thank you to all of you guys that are continuing the love and support on this my team series as well. You know, it is absolutely mind blowing the fact that, you know, if you aren't already, Help us get one step closer to 20k, which I set as an optimistic goal at the start of the year there. But, yeah, let's head towards the Belgian Grand Prix. Then we've got a lot of upgrades still in the works at the moment. So, fingers crossed uh, they can all come on the car as well, obviously, before this weekend. And so far, so good. Two upgrades on. Can we get the third? Yes, we can. Look at that. completed without issue. They'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend. Loving that as we get ready for the Belgian Grand Prix this weekend there. And that means... We officially have the fastest car in Formula 1. It is pretty much even, though, uh, between us, McLaren, and Mercedes at this stage of the campaign. Obviously, on paper, our car, yeah, very, very strong. Doesn't quite have the same sort of effect in the races still there. But, yeah, we theoretically now have the fastest car in Formula 1. Still got a few more upgrades to do. Still got a couple more department upgrades that we need to do as well here. We desperately need to try and get our powertrain department up to level three there. How much is JB's contract? We might be able to do that uh, before we dive into the race here today. They're eight million pounds or eight million dollars, sorry, I should say, for JB for next season. So we should be able to upgrade the fabrication and then just in time for JB's contract, we should be able to get more money in the bank. But yeah, back at Belgium this weekend as well, though. Let's finally get back in to F1, my team. So here we are then, back at the iconic Spa Franco Sub Circuit here for F1 2021. My team, I'll be honest, yeah, very, very intrigued to see how we're going to fare over the course of this weekend. Like we said, theoretically now the fastest car in Formula 1. We'll wait and see whether that does come to fruition this weekend. Of course, JB is still registered as, I think, the second best driver in the sport as well, just behind Max Verstappen. So he's normally a good benchmark to see actually how well we're doing at what stage of the game as well here is that is not the line for a Rouge and Rally on. Watch your MFD for the activation point. But of course, yeah, don't really need too many R and D points or any sort of cheaper upgrades at this stage of the game. Really now, I think the focus is trying to make sure that if we get some rule changes ready for season four, uh, that we've got a car that is capable and ready to battle then as well. Now I think yeah, we we'd always sort of planned that season three uh, would be the year we really go for it here, but I think yeah, we're gonna have to try and shape ourselves up ready for Season 4 of the My Team Career Mode. I think really now we're just losing a lot of time. Obviously, the new performance patch has come in. It has certainly balanced things out a bit with a bit of luck. But, yeah, we'll wait and see. That being said, though, maybe, just maybe, we can put on a good challenge in the latter stages of this season as well. I must admit, the new handling model has certainly affected setups and everything like that a little bit. All the cars nowhere near as quick as they once were. And it is just the green score. Yeah, I think the only thing we can really hope for, of course, they have made the AI a little bit slower as well. But really, yeah, the ultimate test will come in qualifying for this race. Just obviously, again, all the cars now a bit slower for those of you that aren't aware as to what's the new patch entailed. But whether it's going to affect us a bit more than the AI, because of course they needed retraining on F1 2021 as well, is certainly going to be interesting to see. But hopefully we can just complete this fuel management run Get into qualifying and yeah, maybe the next couple of episodes we're going to have to tweak a few things around just a little bit. feel early impressions like the car's a bit more edge so far, but the pace is pretty good though. We're about 1.3 up, but again, always at Spa. The practice programs tend to go pretty well for us here again. Such high speed sections of the lap. We are helped out by a pretty OP power unit at this stage of the day there. It's actually still, they reckon, one of the weaker parts of the car, but of course the AI just find everything through the twisty bits here as we head up in towards the final chicane. Just going to let off a little bit there, try and get the car into the purple score. Short shift out the final corner as well, up towards the line. Bit of a lift and coast, that's going to be purple. 
Program. There we go, Complete let's get into quality. Well, well, the summer break has served two and two motorsport well, plenty of big chassis and aero upgrades onto the car as they get ready for the Spa-Francorchamps Grand Prix here in Belgium. But yeah, let's just wait and see whether those upgrades have worked. Maybe we'll have to go for like a JV06 sort of second half of the season here where we end up doing the best. And then hopefully it can set us up there. A bit better than Honda did in 07. It's, yeah, it turned into quite a weird sort of... Uh, I don't even know the right way to describe it. I should probably be concentrating on our qualifying lap, though. Let's just see what we can get out of the thing. Obviously a bit less aero on the car. Should make it even quicker down the straights, naturally. But 250 miles an hour. It's certainly no slouch as we head up in towards the chicane. Absolutely love the fact you can really use a lot of the curbs around Spino, it is such a track of just attacking, attacking, attacking and just praying that the track doesn't bite back because Belgium, although the walls aren't too close in a lot of places, it will still punish you. Right, up in towards the final couple of corners then, Hamilton still does a 38-4 at the end of the first runs there. Can't help but feel I'm breaking a bit too early through the final chicane, that is not the line. At the final corner, down towards the line, it is going to be a 140.0. Which isn't as far away from Hamilton as I would have thought. But, yeah, that in sort of a weird way is actually a pretty decent time despite that mistake. There's definitely a lot of time to find if we need to. But that might be good enough. Well, so far in qualifying, the field spread has been very, very weird. We're currently still sat P8. But Yuki Sonoda is 10th behind us. And the gap to P16 is only about 4 tenths of a second here. So, yeah, very, very big gap at the top. A very, very big gap at the bottom. But I just don't want to take anything to chance. At this early stage of qualifying. Don't want to be out in Q1 like we did at the Hungaro ring last time out. Of course, if you guys remember. So we're going to try and go for another run. Oh, a big lockup of the rears, though. Somehow hold it in the right direction out of the source. Of course, the new driver patch has come out as well. So I think we're going to see the likes of Yuki Sonoda get royally mugged off now. By his teammate, Lewis Hamilton. It might also put pay to Daniel Ricciardo's championship challenge. Because he, well, might have been nerfed by himself. Obviously, he won the uh, Italian Grand Prix last weekend, but has had a very up and down season so far. Down in towards the final couple of corners, though, of our second run. Don't make sure we don't do the same mistakes we've done in the first. At uh, the final corner, put the power down. We're a second up, and that's going to put us P2 at the end of the first runs. Well, absolutely love to see that at the end of Q1. They're about Hamilton's six tenths clear. At the top of the running there. On a 138.4. That is going to be a tremendously difficult time to try and beat in qualifying. Any major surprises though. Bottas out in Q1. Has often made it through into Q2 there. But Grand Yuzhou does make it through in his Alpha Tauri there. So it is, yeah, the typical six out in Q1. Right, heading out then into Q2. Of course, having to do the double run in Q1. What we're going to do out is go first of all on a run on the old set of tyres that we did on our first lap in the first session. And then, fingers crossed, obviously, find any time that we need to on the second lap there. Guan Yu Zhou already back down to the 1 minute 40s. But, yeah, we need to try and really muster Hamilton and sort of rustle his feathers. Probably building up a lot more confidence with the car as well as qualifying has gone on here. I really did feel like it was very, very loose and lively in at free practice. But we seem to have got to grips with it, sort of driven our way around it, perhaps. As a while ago, yeah, this thing definitely feels a lot better. As we head out in Q2, we've got a Mercedes closing up behind us, though. I think not too sure if that's Hamilton or a young Yuki Sonoda, but down in towards the final chicane. Breaking nice and late there. Really now easy to lock the fronts, though, on F1 2021, I'm finding. At the final corner, though, down towards the line. First lap is going to be a 39-0 again. Verstappen and Ricardo, though, finding a lot of time, as well as Sonoda. And Hamilton now only down in P5. Again, of course, a very, very topsy-turvy Q2 here for the Belgian Grand Prix. So we're going to go out for a run on the fresh set of tyres here. Obviously, as well as we make it through into Q3. Of course, that means we're on some slightly fresher rubber for the start as well. And that can be absolutely critical here in Belgium. Meant to be a sunny weekend, though. Because that is not the line. Why am I running wide into Turn 1 every time round? Not too sure how I'm managing that. Just nipping the grass on more than one occasion there. But not going to cost us much. And he's going to give us a nice run. As we head down through a Rouge and Rally on here and up onto the Kemmel Straight. You can see the Delta still coming down by fractions as we head up the straightaway. They're only half tenth down as we head in towards Sector 2. is certainly recoverable. Quarter of a second up as we head in through Sector 3 here. And there's definitely a bit more time to find as we head up towards the line here. But it doesn't look like any of the guys behind us have found much extra paces. We might be good enough to get through into Q3 anyway. But like I said, we'd much rather start 
on the one lap fresher rubber. Here is down in towards the final chicane we go. Just keep it nice and tidy and see how many more places we can gain there. Three tenths up as we head towards the line. So 38-7. And that, yeah, is definitely into Q3. It really does seem like a lot of teams have up the ante ready for the final half of the year here. McLaren's Lando Norris fastest in Q2 there, but we still find ourselves P3 at the end of the session, and it is both 2 and 2 motorsport cars, both McLarens, both Mercedes, Red Bulls, and Ferraris into Q3 there, leaving the Alpha Towers, Alpines, and Astons out in Q2 there, but comfortably quicker than Jensen as well so far this weekend. Let's see what we can muster up with one run in Q3. Well, normally we leave our final qualifying run right to the end of Q3 here, but there is a small threat of rain, and the track temperature is meant to be dropping later on in these final 10 minutes here. So we're just going to go out for a run right at the start of this final qualifying session there. And wherever it leaves us, wherever we end up on the grid here in Belgium. Let's go then for one final attacking lap. No mistakes. We can definitely get ourselves right towards the front of the order here if we keep it all hooked up. And that was a much tidier line than we've done on a lot of runs through the source then. Running a little bit deep, not quite clipping the apex. But again, being able to maintain a lot of speed at the corner there, down in towards Rouge and Radion, still not brave enough to attack the inside curb through the right-handed part of the corner there, but we have held on as we head up the Kemmel straight again, just watching the speedo climb right up towards 215 miles an hour here, for a break just for the 50 meter board, down to four through the first part there, hold it, and then short shift under sixth through the final right-hander of the little sector there, attack the curbs, break at the next curbing. As he head up down through Bruxelles here in towards No Name. Again, short shifting back up to avoid the wheel spin. And really allow yourself to roll on the power. That's a big snap of oversteer though. As we head down in towards Pill 1. We were lucky to hold on to that. But not lucky enough to hold on to that. As we head through Pill 1. That is going to be the end of qualifying here. Please don't hit any walls. We have somehow not hit anything. At the end of qualifying there, but we've ruined our last set of tyres. Of course, I don't want to use any of the other sets. Need to save them for the race there. And we look so, so strong throughout the entirety of qualifying. But just like Lando Norris in real life F1 2021, we've just let it get away from us right at the end here in Q3. Pain. We could have been on the front row here for the Belgian Grand Prix there. If we'd been able to get sort of around the pace we have been. We could have definitely been P3 if we'd matched our Q2 run there. But it is Ricardo who takes pole ready for the Belgian Grand Prix here. Verstappen in the Red Bull. They seem to have brought some upgrades this weekend in a P2 there. It's actually McLaren Red Bull. McLaren Red Bull on the front two rows of the grid there. Hamilton down in fifth. Yuki Sonoda down in ninth. Myself and JB eighth and tenth. Let's dive in to the Belgian Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardennes Forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Daniel Ricciardo has a clear view ahead from pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Norris, Perez, Lewis Hamilton and Sainz, Button, Sonoda, Mr Monaco and Pierre Gasly, Mazepin, Russell and Guan Yu Zhou and Stroll, Ocon, Bottas, Charles Leclerc, they've taken a grid penalty, and Nicolas Latifi, Giovinazzi, Lundgaard, Schwartzmann, and Mick Schumacher. 
That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Well, we're starting this Grand Prix where we finish the last at the Hungara ring, so fingers crossed we can continue more forward momentum as the weekend goes on. But we are here then ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. Team do reckon the uh, soft-medium strategy is going to be possible here today as well. So absolutely love to see that. We can now also, I think, run pretty much on the fuel as well. Though. I think I think now we do tend to say fuel in a lot of Grand Prix. They're saying that I'm just going to put a little bit extra in just in case. But we are ready for the Belgian Grand Prix. Round 10 of the year here, halfway through Season 3 of this campaign. And surely now... We have to be in the fight at the very front here. Fastest car on paper in the world of Formula 1. We've got Button just in front of us. Sonoda alongside us as well as Gasly. Five red lights. And it's easy lights out. And away we well. There Gasly responding incredibly well as we head down towards that one there. As well as Sonoda who tries to sneak down around the outside of a couple of cars there. We get a push from behind. That was Latifi I think on some mediums who ran into the back of us there. So he must have had a rocket ship start as we head down in towards our Rouge and Rally on. For the first time in this Grand Prix. Gasly and just in front of me there. Button and Sainz though side by side through there. And they do hold on to it. As we now try and get a run back on Pierre Gasly. As we head up the Camel straight on this opening lap there. It does still seem to be McLaren Red Bull. McLaren Red Bull at the front of the field here. But we have lost the one spot off of the start. A lot of wheel spin there as we try to put the power down in through sector two there. And a lot of dirty air. As well here, but yeah, we do not want to be stuck in a battle with Pierre Gasly this weekend, so we're going to try and send it down around the outside through the hairpin. Can we hold it alongside? Yes, we can. We get the inside for the next corner. There are a lot of curbs. Gasly really tried to squeeze us out there. We do exactly the same to him, and we do then hold on to P9 at the start of the Grand Prix, but a lot of understeer and just dirty air early on in this race. Gasly's going to come straight back at us at the bottom of the hill here, but again, we're just going to hang him out to dry. Slam that door firmly shut in Paul Pierre's face. And yeah, we haven't gained anything. We haven't lost anything on that one of this Belgian Grand Prix. But we need to try and match the guys in front. Hello, flags out. Guessing that is behind us. As that's actually one of the Alpines into the pits. No, that must be Latifi. Who of course, ran into us. Down in towards Turn 1 there. So Latifi, yeah, his day goes from, well, pretty decent before Turn 1. A pretty bad straight after. We've got to make sure we stick in the DRS, though, of Carlos Sainz in front of us. If we want any chance of making forward progress in this race, because Pierre Gasly is looking feisty behind. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. So DRS now has been enabled in the Belgian Grand Prix, but are we just going to hang on inside of Carlos Sainz's window there? I don't think we are. 1.0 seconds... Just behind Carlos, there's a big wobble again through our Rouge. That is not going to help us out in this Belgian Grand Prix, as I already feel like we're pushing to the limit just to hang on to these guys. There is Gasly now, will get it on us, and he's definitely going to be gaining. But yeah, we just need to keep calm and keep trying to make good, consistent laps. A lot of risks over the last lap there to make sure we are now within the DRS range of Carlos Sainz in this Grand Prix. There's still just no bravery. Through a Rouge and Raddy on there as we head up the Camel straight. Definitely seems a little bit broken still on F1 2021. But the AI is still rapid through the corners there. As we've got a Red Bull of, I think, must be Perez duking it out with one of the Mercedes there. That must also, of course, be Lewis Hamilton in this Grand Prix. As McLaren seem to still be looking very, very racy at this stage of the year there. Hamilton has definitely got his work cut out. If he wants to try and claim yet another Formula 1 World Championship. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm worried about trying to make sure we got both Ferraris behind us in this race. And this battle between Sergio and Lewis has really brought a lot of the field very, very close together. All of a sudden again here, so we might be able to now get a bit of a run on Carlos Sainz. Look at the overspeed we've got on the Ferraris. We head in through Blanchemont. There a tiny bit of contact with the back end of the Spaniard's car. There, but we will muscle our way to the outside of Carlos Sainz here. The team not too fond of that, neither were the FIA. But we are now up into P8 okay, of the race. Please. We don't want to lose places because of a penalty. Oh, I think that was absolutely fine. But, yeah, clearly the FIA not such a fan of that one. There is Gasly now uh, trying to attack the Spaniard here. So I'm not too sure if Sainz has developed an issue in this Grand Prix or what. But you can just see as well the gap for the bat markers already in this Grand Prix there. As we now try and get closer to our teammate Jensen Button. 
in this race there. Look at the overspeed again that we've got on the AI here. So what we lose through the high speed corners, we certainly can make up back down the straightaways here, up the inside of our teammate. After a pretty slow burning start to this Grand Prix, we've got yellow flags out, and I think that's Sainz okay, that has gone round. What's happened to Carlos? Well then, with Carlos Sainz in this Grand Prix, he's got Gasly right behind him as we head up the Kemmel straight here. Does he just nudge the curb? No! He just decides to throw a donut in there for the sake of it and Sainz around. Here in Sp in Spain? In the, he's, he's Spanish. This is this is Belgium though, Matt. Well, the top three have certainly just packed their bags and left early on here in Spa for Uncle Champ, but we've got to try and make sure we sit close to Sonoda here because there is definitely still a good chance of maybe sort of P4, P5 in this race, but that all depends on how well the mediums perform later on in the race. So I'm going to guess a lot of the AI are going to be on the one stop still, but going on to hard, the two stop just doesn't really work around here. But yeah, we need to try and go with some different strats to really open ourselves up a race strategy. Now I feel like we're starting to click with the new handling model here on F1 2021. Getting a little bit closer to Sonoda. feel like we're just sort of working out what you can get away with, what you can at this stage of the day. But are we about to see Hamilton and Perez have another battle here as we head out onto the Kemmel straight once more here? Hamilton, of course, he's going to have the DRS and a much quicker car down the straights anyway, but not quite close enough to Checo up the road. So we again lock the rear slightly there. Wouldn't notice it, but a small correction on the wheel held that in the right direction again. Don't really want to spend too long stuck behind Sonoda in this Grand Prix. He seems to lose a lot of time to Checo and Lewis through the middle sector there and sort of gets dragged back up to him through the DRS zones here as well. Look at that. Yuki Sonoda into the pits at the end of lap 7 here. we got a couple of the top guys as well. Ricardo and Verstappen there as JB into the pits as well. So we're going to box at the end of this one. Lando Norris now leads the Grand Prix. But we're not going to have any DRS on Hamilton. Push now. And the tyres are feeling pretty, yeah, pretty second-hand. No flags out now here in the Belgian Grand Prix. They don't say it's Carlos Sainz with even more issues here. As we head back through Puan. No! It's our teammate Jensen Button out of the Belgian Grand Prix there. And that looks to just be a standard engine failure for our teammate. So clearly all these upgrades have made the car incredibly quick. But GB suffering reliability woes this weekend there. And it's not even going to help us out with a safety car. In this Grand Prix there, a hammer blow, Jensen Button out of, the race. out of the Belgian Grand Prix there, and that is well and truly heartbreaking. We, however, have got to keep our head down here as we've got to box in at the end of this lap here in the Belgian Grand Prix. As Hamilton and Perez, of course, going to dive it in just in front of us, as well as, I'm sure, Lando Norris further up the road. But yeah, those tyres were d absolutely destroyed at the end of that stint as we just, only just... Get the car slowed down into the pit lane. There we got one of the Aston Martins there. That's Russell extending the stint by an extra lap there. So fair play to him. Obviously, Ricardo and Verstappen going to fly back past. They're both. Is, no, that's now for Tarry as well. As George Russell staying out there, the extra lap. Come on, let us go. Oh, it's going to be. That's that's technically an that illegal overtake. Stop. No more scheduled pit stops. That's definitely an illegal pit exit there on Pierre Gasly. But we're hanging on to it anyway. We've got a little bit of time there. Actually, Sonoda. Has gained a good couple of seconds on that. He's actually gained a good couple of seconds on everyone. As Bottas and Gasly going side by side through a rouge there. Gasly's held on, but is he now going to be able to get a run on us? As we head up the Kemmel straight there. Look at the run from Pierre as we head up the Kemmel straightaway here. Down in towards the chicane there. We're going to try and hook it up back around the outside here. Don't want to again be battling with Gasly too much in this Grand Prix there. We do just about hold it on around the outside there. Force Gasly defensive. In towards the next corner here, but the Pierre absolutely sends it down in through the hairpin. But just like we saw on lap one, we do get the car up the inside, slam the door shut. That's cost us both a lot of time, though. To the Mercedes in front there is look at my F1 Esports lines. I have, however, noticed that a lot of the AI now are also on another set of medium tyres here, so maybe they're also doing the two stop strategy in this Grand Prix, or perhaps just like us, they believe it is just about doable here. At Spa, we got Russell now into the pit lane as well, which is going to really move us up into P8. But yeah, we just need to try and get a bit closer once more to Sonoda. Try and get past him, whilst we've still got a tyre advantage. Show into the pits as well. That's where now back up into P7 of this Grand Prix. But yeah, the hard tyres, I've said it before and I'll say it again, really just don't work around this Belgian Grand Prix. So Perez and Sonoda might be vulnerable over the next few laps as we can really afford to use a lot of battery around a lap here because we just aren't getting through any of the charge. 
now can we get a run on Yuki Tsunoda in this Grand Prix? The gap under half a second as we head down in towards Oruz and Rally on here getting a really nice run on the exit then. Not even using too much curb either on the exit of the corner there. And surely now it's going to be a done move on Yuki Tsunoda. He goes defensive. We muscle our way to the outside there and Colleen past the Merc pass. in a similar fashion to what Pierre Gasly tried to do on us there. Purple through Sector 1 as well. Yeah, the hard tyres just not working for him and Checo. So P5 should be on the table. And Hamilton only three seconds up the road. Well, new fastest lap of the day. We'll take the bonus point if we can have it here. Certainly would be useful. But now we've got to try and get close enough to Checo again to go for another move here. We're a bit closer than we were on Sonoda last lap. You can see the top four really have spread out in this Grand Prix. Through we go again there. A little bit more curve that time around than we did on the previous lap, but again, Sergio Perez even slower in that Red Bull down the straights to the inside. Going to be clean in front, and we're going to even get back to the racing line before the braking zone there. And now up into P5. Coming now down in towards the final five laps of this Belgian Grand Prix, it does now feel like really there could be an opportunity still at a podium here. Both myself and Hamilton are closing in the gap to Max Verstappen. But we're closing in slightly quicker on Lewis than Lewis is on the young Dutchman in front of him. Four seconds separate all three of us at this stage of the Grand Prix. But the gap year is coming down rather rapidly. And to show just how hard we're pushing, another new fastest lap of the Grand Prix here. On some pretty worn out set of mediums. Gap to Verstappen still four seconds. Lewis Hamilton though, under two. If we can get some DRS at the right time on him and fly past him. That could easily give us like another free half a second towards Verstappen. This has got to be the lap we get past Hamilton as we head towards lap 20 here. Verstappen under three seconds now up the road, but we need to try and get past Hamilton. When we head up the Camel Straight this time through, we've pretty much drained the battery every single lap here. We've still got half a charge left. Goes to show just how well developed this Renault engine is now. But all over the back of Lewis Hamilton as we head out of the final corner, we are going to get the DRS on the Mercedes. Another new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Dipping down into the 1 minute 40s here. So really, yeah, have found a lot of confidence in the car later on in this weekend. But can we get a DRS run on Lewis Hamilton this time around there as we head up the Kemmel Straight once more here. Just three more laps to go around the Belgian Grand Prix. They're activating the ERS halfway through Eau Rouge that time round. And Hamilton now has got to be a sitting duck for us. As we head into our sector two here, Hamilton is aware of us. He goes offensive, but clean down around the outside we go. We just about get the car slowed down between the white lines. They take a lot of curb on the exit of the corner, but that was arguably one of the best moves I think I'll pull off on F1 2021 there. 100% commitment, 100% bravery, and now Verstappen less than two seconds up the road there, and that is a nine-time world champion we have just steamrolled around the outside of. Coming on towards the final lap then of the Belgian Grand Prix and the gap to Verstappen. Now down just one second here as we head through the final chicane there. I think it is Lando Norris who's just snatched away fastest lap from me once more here. So that's a little bit gutting to see right at the very end. But as long as we get some DRS on Max Verstappen here, anything is on still. And I'd rather get a podium here than a bonus lap fastest lap point. Can we get a run on Verstappen as we head down in towards Eau Rouge? Not this time round. The gap still one second there as we head out of the other side. And it looks like the hard tyres of Verstappen's Red Bull are coming back into their own on the final lap of this Grand Prix. The Hamilton hasn't really dropped back either here. So we're going to have to just really time it out and try and stay as close as possible through Sector 2 as we can here. We always seem brave at the top of the hill still as we try and tack as much curb as we possibly can down the other side. But I think the key now will have to be trying to get a run out of Blanchemon here on the final lap but obviously of course to do that we need to stay close in towards the final sector of the Belgian Grand Prix though it doesn't look likely but we do still need to try and get a big run out of Stavolo here in towards the final couple of corners of the Belgian Grand Prix taking all the curb we're going to completely drain the battery as we head up in towards the final couple of corners of this race but it looks like Max Verstappen might just about do enough here in Belgium to hold on for another podium in this Grand Prix there. Lando Norris takes home the race of victory. We do get mighty close to Verstappen. We think about it through the final okay there. But Verstappen, of course, never letting that by him. P4 in the end. We push to the end. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home.
A difficult race then on one of the all-time classic circuits, but they persevered to take the win here today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. Well, the gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race today for our championship leader. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Well, my driver of the day has to be Charles Leclerc. He was unstoppable out on the track today, weaving through the competition with ease. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. McLaren continue to increase their gap at the top. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Alfa Romeo, whose good result moves them further up the championship. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Belgian Grand Prix there. And McLaren certainly sending out an ominous message to the rest of the field there. Another one, too, right at the end of the Grand Prix there. But weirdly enough, who must have snatched fastest lap away? Uh, Sainz, apparently, did a 1.14 on the last lap here in Belgium. Uh, I, I don't know. F1 2021 is a mysterious game at the best of times there. But Norris takes home the double header. Daniel Ricciardo there. Verstappen just held on for the podium on the final lap. You cannot say we didn't push the right the way to the checkered flag to finish out ahead of Lewis Hamilton there. Perez, Sonoda, Gasly, Mazepin and Russell... Uh, sorry, Charles Leclerc even around out your points finishes there with Russell just missing out. You can see both Haas and Latifi are lap down. Sainz retiring on the final lap there. Joined our teammate Jensen Button on the sidelines there, so heartbreak for those two drivers as well. But it does mean championship-wise, we are still in eighth place at the moment there. Carlos Sainz and Verstappen now tied on 90 points in front of us, but Hamilton, the gap at the top, down to three ahead of Lando Norris here. Ricardo back within a race victory's distance as well there, and Sonoda sat in a bit of no man's land in P4 as well. Both Ferraris, then we got myself, uh, sorry, Verstappen, myself, Perez and Button as well, still in that battle with Red Bull. That is going to be very, very difficult to overhaul later on this year there. Gasly jumps Mazepin, Lungard jumps Mick Schumacher and Antonio Giovinazzi as well. They're on constructors wise. 46 back from Red Bull as well. It's going to be a mountain to climb in the second half of the year there. Alfa Romeo jump has the one count back as well, so good for Alfa Romeo as well there at the end of the day, but McLaren still 33 ahead of Mercedes as well there. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more F1 2021. A massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members. If you want to be featured in these end clips, make sure you click the join button down below. But yeah, once again, a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, F. Stathios, Kato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, and Mighty Spork for becoming channel members. Their support is really, really appreciated.